tears are on her cheeks. She has nothing to comfort her among all her lovers. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. Judah has gone into exile under affliction and under hard servitude. She dwells among the nation, but she has found her. All her pursuers have overtaken her in the midst of distress. The rows of Zion are in mourning because no one comes to the appointed feast. All her gates are desolate. Her priests are groaning. Virgins are herself is bitter. Her adversaries have become her master. Her enemies prosper. For the Lord has caused her grief because of the multitude of transgression. Her little ones have gone away as captives before the adversary. All her majesty has departed from the daughter of Zion. Her princes have become like deer that have found no pasture. They have fled without strength before the pursuit. Amen. God's word for God's people. Oh, precious Father, we give you thanks, we give you praise, because you're worthy of all our praises. Oh, precious Father, we come now, praying, Lord, for your divine anointing of your Holy Spirit. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. 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 This morning for our message, the subject of our message, devastation of separation. In our text, it tells us that Jews and Jerusalem lay desolate and violent. The weeping prophet Jeremiah you survey the last has a lot to cry about. We know that Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. And as he surveyed the landscape and looking at all that had been done to Jerusalem, he began to cry and call on the name of Jesus. When we look at the landscape of America today, it should grieve our heart to see the condition that is in it. Not only America, but the world at large. The picture paints in the first six verses just a sample of his pain. The ruined condition of Jerusalem turned Jeremiah off to the mystery and suffering of the entire nation of Judah and all of his citizens. He saw his own people in exile. He saw the people scattered, swallowed up by the Babylonian Empire. Affliction and hard labor became their only friend. In a place that they could not go home, and there was no rest for the river. Jeremiah saw the pain of the coming. All the road leading to the temple of Zion, Jerusalem, was deserted. Worship of the one true and living God had come to that home. I cannot help but to think about. The America now and the world at large right now. The road that will be busy on Sunday morning, people will be going to the house of worship. is less traveled right now. And she come to a halt. It may have come to a halt in the house of worship, but not within our heart. Because we can worship and praise Him each and every day. Every day He allows us to live with another day of praise and worship. Every morning that He wakes us up, from our bedside was another day of praise and thanksgiving. Yes. Although we're not able to come together in the house of worship, but yet he's worthy of all our praise. Yes. It goes on to say all the gates of Jerusalem were desolate. All the priests were mourning. All the young ladies were grieving. And Judah and Jerusalem were in deep anguish, weeping. Great nature Judah had become the servants of an enemy, and our enemy. They are God. No longer are they able to worship in the truth and the living God. They are now worshiping out of God in Babylonian captivity. You know that there are many who would ask the question, why did God do this to 
to us. This is usually the first thing that comes out of our mouth and the mouth of many people. When things go against us or when things are not going our way, we often ask the question, why did God do this to us? But the question that you should ask, what am I doing that God is not pleased with? Oftentimes when we go through things that because of our sin and misdoing. When the time will go on to say, oh, why did God let this happen to me? I can imagine within myself around the world today, people are asking some of these same questions about this situation that the world is in right now. But as a world, as people of God, we need to look and examine ourselves in some way that's not pleasing and acceptable in his sight. Some may say, how can God say love me and let this happen to me. You know, God loves right up, but God hates sin. God does not let sin. You know, even when my parents were chastising us and raising us up, and they were whipping us and chastising us, they said, I'm doing it because I love you. We couldn't understand it then, but we understood it better by and by. Seldom do we point fingers in the right direction. We are always pointing fingers at someone else. For Judah, the fingers should have been pointed at Seth. For a lot of us, the fingers need to be pointed at Seth. The people had sinned. They had turned away from God. They had separated themselves from their creator, preferring instead to ponder in the sin and the things of the world. So God withdrew his hand of protection. You know, it's bad to be in a situation where God would draw his hands of protection from you. Because there's never a time in our lives when we don't need the protection of God. There's never a time in our lives we don't need an unseen. It's bad to be in a situation where you don't have God's protection all around you. Yeah. And the name of Judah was soon destroyed. His capital were laid desolate. His citizens were enslaved, not just by Babylon, but by sin also. You know, we can be enslaved to sin so much that it will have them separated from God. All the splendor and the glory of Jerusalem was lost. All the leaders had fled like power. All of King Judah royal court had turned and fled for the fear of their lives. Even in America today, people are going in fear. Fear of what might happen to me. Fear the rock might catch the fire. Jude found out that when you hit rock bottom, there are seldom any friends around to throw you a roof. Everybody that says there's your friend is not your friend. Because when you really need a friend, there's nowhere to be found. You know, there's a song that was in the circle of the world, sung by Barry White and uh, Bobby Woodman, saying that, talk about when you're being down and out. Very seldom do people want to help them when you're down and out. Right. Long as you got money and could help them, they are your friend. But when you're down and out, they'll turn their back on you. But I know a friend that will never leave you nor forsake you. He will be there whenever you need him. Whenever we take our eyes off the Savior, we leave ourselves open for the evil spirit of Satan to come in. And I call right there to say this, that oftentimes we say things about people of the world. Why is people acting so crazy? Why are people doing all these evil things in the world? What is wrong with the mind of people? We must realize that if God is not on the end to take up residence, and when Satan takes up residence, he will cause you to do evil things that you don't even realize what you're doing yourself. And all the same to do his work, he has to have a body to do it with. For the prophet Jeremiah, the hand was almost unbearable. He could not help but think back to the old, good old day when they wished God and joy the fruit that came with living a life of obedience. You know, it's sad to say that when
They think it's going to be the same way all the time. Jeremiah began to think back that when they go to the house of worship, how they would praise and lift up the name of Jesus. And even in a time like this, I imagine some people say I'll be glad when I can go back to the house of worship where I can worship him and praise and fellowship with one another. Worshiping God is all right in everyday life, but it makes a difference when we can come together on one accord. Jeremiah said, I can't help but to think back when the church was on fire for the Lord. I can remember the day growing up when the church would be on fire for the Lord. People came and worshiped and gave God the praise and thanks. That's what happened when you find yourself being hurt by the state of separation from God. Your mind is fit to think back to the day, to the time when things were better. A time when you know who you were and whose you were. A time when you live fellowship with the Father. A time when you put God first in your life. And we need to put God first in our life. Every day we need to put Him first in our life. People wear the arm braces and what will Jesus do? You ought to think back and see how good God has been to you. Where He brought you from. A time when He knew better than to disobey God. There was a time when we knew better to disobey our parents. But what would happen? They would chastise us and say, I'm whipping you because I love you. I want you to be a better person in life. God has a way of chastising us. Time in your life centered around the one who kept you sinning. Jeremiah and all Judah cried out in anger. There was no end in sight to their pain. We look at the world today and people wondering, when is all going to end? I'll let you know that it will end when we all turn back to God. And when we give our life to Him and repent of our sin and seek forgiveness, He will forgive our sin and heal our land. They were in anger, crying out to God, praying for the end to come. They would begin to remember the freedom that they once had. They would remember their family in particular. All of the sons of the who had been killed during the Babylonian captivity. They will remember their home, their job, their farm, their garden, and all the festival came that celebrated with their community. My mind cannot help but just flip back on what we're going through right now. A lot of people can remember when it was good when we could fellowship together. Now we got to practice social distancing. We cannot come together as we used to. But we got to pray. We must pray and pray and trust God and for His healing upon our land. But Mary will be hard pressed to the Savior through the pain of the current situation. Sometimes it's hard to reflect back on the good times that you used to have when your old bird with pain and suffering. They are in pain, they are in the prison, they are being tortured, and they are being used as slaves in a foreign land. Sometimes, oh how good God has been to you when your body is racking with pain. It's hard to reflect back on things that why it used to be when I'm going through a lot. Believe it or not, even as Christians, sometimes we get overburdened with problems and situations in our life. It seems to take our mind away from serving God. But even in the midst of all that we go through, we still must give God some praise. Even though you may not pray a long prayer, all you have to do is say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Lord, just give me a way out of this situation. How a city becomes so long. And then I refer back to the world today. How can a world and a nation become so long and straight away from God? The answer is some to the sin of disobedience. They have turned away from God and decided to do things their own way. They are not doing it God's way. They are doing it their own way. And the result of the sin was the devastation of being separated from God. Sin was the problem then and sin is still the problem now. 
king. After all, you can't avoid it unless you first know how to recognize it. Too many get caught in sin because they never take the time to define it. Sin is any act, habit, practice, idea, or thought. Anything that separates you from God. Because you do know that God is holy and you cannot dwell in an unholy place. Oftentimes in life people have got it all wrong. They say I'm not going out to that church building because they're not right. Amen. The building is not what we come to worship. The building is not the church. The church is in your heart. Because if your heart is not right, and then you're not right with God. A story told a mother who dressed her son in his little Sunday suit for a family gathering. She said, go outside and wait by the car and don't get dirty. The little boy went outside and as he was standing there, he saw his little toy truck in the mud puddle from the rain from the night before. So he decided to get it out. The mud splashed all over his suit. When the mother came out, she said, did not tell you not to get dirty. The little boy said, but mama, I didn't think the, the mud would get on me. The little boy is up. We dabbled in sin. We tormented it. We experimented with it. Because we all men we not get dirty. But you cannot play with fire and not get burned. If you get dirty and there is no point in you to wash you up and bring you back into submission, God has no choice but to remove himself from your prison. And that's a bad situation to be in. Have you ever watched these little little that be on the street break? Everywhere they go, their skin will shame to camouflage them where they are. Satan has shaped sin into many ways of entitlement to suit your fancy. He can make it taste good. If that's your weakness, he'll move it to the top, move it from the top shelf to the middle shelf, right where you can reach it. He'll make sure you have enough money to pay for it. He'll make it feel good to you. He'll pack it in just the right amount of drugs to keep you coming back for more and sing and sing and tug at you so hard that you keep tired of fighting against it and you just give in. This is what happened to the people of Judah. They got tired of fighting sin. So they got dirty. And there was not enough God left in to clean them up. They had abandoned their first love in favor of Satan. Snap. The degree of sin. The worst part of sin is, is the problem and the hell that causes it. Sin strips a person of dignity, wraps him in self righteousness, and sends him out into the world of the spirit of Satan. And that's still not the worst part of it. The worst is that he does not even know that he's being controlled by Satan. That's a sad situation to be in. To be controlled by Satan and don't even know you're controlled by Satan. And we begin to say, what is wrong with you? all are know that. But you fear of Satan will get in you and take control of you. Remember the man in the graveyard. When he met quiet and he asked, why, God, what do you have to do with me? Why act in his name? He said, lead you. Lead you, make power. Satan will get into you and cause you to do the thing that you would normally do in your right mind. When Satan comes in, he takes full control. Sin will run your reputation, corrupt your parallel faster than the blink of an eye. Because of sin, being conscious have been part. Hell and corrupt. Because of sin, the eye have become bloodshot, devilish, and tear driven. Because of sin, men and have become bloody, greedy, and thieving. Their tongues have become slandered, filthy, unbridled, and critical. People will talk about you, say all kinds of things about you. They'll cuss you out at the drop of a dime. And I'm not talking about all the world people. I'm talking about some church people. Right. Their bodies have become diseased, feeble, indecent, and immoral. And we can see all these things that are happening in the world. 
right now. Their minds have become frustrated and perplexed. Terrified and troubled. Their attitudes have become proud, rebellion, childish, and stubborn. Their desires their desire have become beastly, brutal, lustful, excessive, and unsatisfied. Their feelings have become insistent, calm, resentful, and jealous. And worst of all, their souls have become burdened and joyless. Sin is a loathsome and despicable partner. It punishes punish our word and poison. You can color it, you can pacify it, you can camouflage it, you can seal it, or cover it up, but it's still covered up. I don't care how you fix it, sin is sin. You can disguise it, you can decorate it, and defend it, define it, and design it, but it's still disgraceful and it's still sin. You can laugh at it, you can love it, you can love it, you can legalize it like some of the sin that they have legalized today. I don't care how you legalize it, I don't care how you try to make it seem right, it's sin and mistake in the eyes of God and the mouth of God. And regardless of how you savor it or soften it, it is still sin and it is sinful. No matter how you try to cover it up, make it look good, it is still sin. Yes. Yes. Romans 2 and 2 say, But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth that gets them to commit such things. It also says in Romans 14 and 12 that every one of us has to give an account of ourselves to God. There will be a lot of forming as sinners standing before God. You know, people think they're giving away with things today. They think they're doing things high over the rock and high in their hand. They think they're giving away when they mistreat people. Our Sunday school lesson has been talking about injustice. People do things to people that think they're getting away with it. But God has a way of opening our eyes. Thank God for social media. A lot of these things that we got away with, God has a way of bringing it out. Even though it's going to the justice system, they may pat them on the head and say, don't do it no more. But have mercy when you stand before God. You're going to have to give an account of your sin. I don't care who you are. Raise your hand your cup. Sin is sin. I don't care how you look at it. And we all have to give an account. Doesn't mean you think about your position, your power, or authority. If you do wrong, you have to give an account. What will judgment look like? How will God weed out the sinner? How will we separate the weak from the past? The good from the bad? The right from the wrong? The holy from the horror? The pure from the profane? And the saved from the law? He will do it with his omniscient power because he sits high and he looks low. God knows the difference between jewel and junk, hot and cold, fire and pure, sacred and secular, humble and hypocrite, true and false. He alone is the source of all wisdom and knowledge, and he surely can tell the difference between sheep and goat. He knows the difference between a, a wolf and sheep clothing. You may put on that fake wolf, put on that fake shoe, because God knows what's on the inside. You may look good on the outside, but God knows your heart. He knows what's on the inside. Because he still is only begotten son to die upon the cross. And you know one thing? People take their kid away with stuff. But there will come a time and a place when God will draw his hand and when God will uncover the sins of the world. And one day we have to stand before God and give an account of all our wrongdoing. One day those who reject Christ will stand before a rejected Christ and hear him say, Depart from me, I know you not. It's bad to live all your life and think you're living a good, holy, and righteous life. And to hear God say, Depart from me, I know you not. But I want to let you know that there is hope. There's hope.
steal for Israel, there's hope still for America, there's hope still for the world, there's hope for all mankind. And Jesus is that hope. He's the hope of the world. He's the head of the church. He is peace for your mind and joy for your heart. He is rest for the weary. Sin makes us ugly. But when you give your life to God, He can make you beautiful. Sin makes us free. But Christ can make us generous. Sin makes us selfish. But Christ can make us sacrificial. Don't be sad. I waited too late. It will be too late when you stand before Him to correct the mistake that you've done wrong. Because He's standing right now with our strength on waiting for you to give your life to Him. There might be one that haven't given their life to Christ. There might be one that are going through some pains and situations in their life and seem like it's over. But there is hope in the midst of it all. Jesus is the hope. There might be one that have turned their back on God and strayed away. Now is the time to come back while you still have a chance, while the blood is running warm in your veins. There might be someone been through some situations in your life. Felt like there was no hope. God is there. Now is the time to come while the blood is running warm in your veins. God is sending a message to the world at large. He's coming back again for a church without spot already. Don't let it be said I waited too late. Come now while the blood is running warm in your veins. While you still have a chance. Watch and listen. Now is the time to get Christ your life. He's waiting. He's waiting for the house of Amen. Well, oh, gracious Father, we thank you for your Lord and Son, Jesus Christ, who came, let it die. That we might have all right to get to life. And Father, we just want to say thank you for your grace, your mercy, your loving kindness. We pray that Father for all mankind, for our sisters and brothers around the world. Even in such a time like this, we pray your divine healing in the precious name of Jesus. Father, we be ever careful to give you the heart and glory to praise. Father, we pray for the sick. The shirt, the bereaved, banished, near and far. We bring the blood of Jesus over them. We pray every part for those who have lost loved ones in this pandemic. We pray that you will lift up power down here and heal broken heart. We pray, Lord, for those who have loved ones who are sick and going through some treatment. However it may be, we pray that they might heal the body in the precious.
Father, we thank you for your continuous blessings upon this church family at such a time as it is. We pray and we follow for those who have food, clothing, and shelter. We pray and we follow for those who may be laid off from their job. We 